In this tutorial, we are just going to go over organic chemistry. I know this is a topic that we've told you to say it's complicated, but it's very, very simple. I'm going to make it very interesting for you to follow through. Okay, so what basically is organic chemistry? So under organic chemistry, what I want you to know is we are basically concerned about studying the carbon-containing compounds. So we're going to study their structures, their properties, their reactions, and how we get to prepare them. Okay. So a few things that we need to know about the carbon atom is eh? it has got an atomic number of 6 and has got a mass number of 12. So looking at the atomic number of 6, we are able to come up with what we call the electron configuration. And of course, a basic electron, electron configuration would be we have how many electrons? We have 2 electrons and then followed by 4 electrons, right? But using the orbitals, we can also write the, the required uh, kind of electron configuration at this level where we are. So basically I have 1, 1s2, one and then we have 2s2, and then we have 2p2, right? So we'll notice that in our outermost shell, we have got 2 electrons in the s orbital and 2 electrons in the p orbital there. Okay, that's very important. So looking at this, this is going to give us a kind of orbitalization that we expect this carbon atom to undergo. Okay. So looking at a certain examples of uh, compounds that are made up of carbon, I can draw some of them and then we'll come up with a kind of hybridization that carbon is able to undergo. And of course, one thing that is very important for us to note as we start is carbon forms a maximum of four bonds because it has got a valence of what? Because it has got a valence of four. So it's capable of forming a maximum of four bonds. That's very important. So every time we are drawing a, any compound containing carbon we need to make sure that it has got uh, four bonds okay that is, go that is even going to help us even as we get to draw certain compounds okay so i can draw this compound so i've come across it so this is carbon dioxide okay i'll not show the long pair electrons and then we can also talk about um, this kind of a compound and when we have hydrogen there and then the other cases, they can also talk about, let's have this one, where carbon is forming single bonds. Yeah. So hydrogen, hydrogen there, hydrogen, hydrogen. So, so far, we can see the different bonds that this carbon is able to, to form, right? And then one more that I can draw is uh, where we have carbon forming three bonds and then a hydrogen there. Okay, interesting. So these are the different four ways in which carbon can actually react or form compounds or bonds with any other atoms, right? This is what we are seeing. And of course, what we are looking at is uh, where is the triple bond? So we can see that carbon has formed our main connections, two connections, right? So in this case, the kind of hybridization that is undergone, we can call it SP hybridized. And of course, the other case as well, as you can see, where we have carbon dioxide there. That is also sp hybridization. And then the last one on the left, this is sp3. And then this is sp2. So one easy way of you identifying the kind of hybridization that the carbon has undergone is by counting the number of connections. And in that case, you get to disregard whether it's a triple bond, count it as one. Or in short, count the number of atoms that are surrounding each carbon. For example, if you look at this one, this one is being surrounded by how many at different atoms? Two. So therefore, we'll count the first connection as S and then the, the rest to be P. Okay, of course, the maximum is SP3. And so carbon undergoes three different kinds of hybridization. And if you look at this other carbon here, yeah, if you try to count S, let the rest be P. P, P. So you have um, sp3. Of course, in the actual sense, this is not basically what it implies. Okay. So if we go back to our hybridization under chemical bonding, we realize that if we are to draw, of course, we've talked about the electron configuration of our carbon atom, right? So what have we said? We've said the electron configuration is 1, right? So we said 1s2, and then we said 2s2, and then 2p to right so if we are to show this on our molecular orbit diagram what we are seeing is something that is very interesting so we have our inner 
qubit of A1s, which is having two electrons. And then we have two S as well. So I can show two S somewhere there. So two S, which has got two electrons as well. And then we can have the P orbitals. So let me just move this a bit this side so that we're able to see clearly. Okay. So and then we have P orbitals. So P orbitals we know that P has got is able to accommodate up to six electrons. So I'll draw three different uh, orbitals there. So that is our two P. And how many electrons are there? So we have only two electrons there. So looking at the number of electrons that we have, this gives us uh, this diagram that we have here. Now, some funny, funny questions that they can give you under organic chemistry. Uh, you need to write the excited state of uh, the electron configuration of the excited state of a carbon. So in the actual sense that we have is uh, this is the basic electron configuration or ground state electron configuration of a carbon atom. Now, what about in the excited state? So in the excited state, what basically happens is uh, this electron that you are seeing there is going to shift and go to that point there. So therefore, in the excited state, we expect that this sh sh there will only be a single, so that electron will go there. So there will only be a single electron in the 2s orbital. Okay. So now this is what allows carbon to form up to how many bonds? Up to four bonds because of this same idea there. Okay. Now, how is it possible that it's able to form up to three different kinds of hybridization? So I can show that as well. So I'll forget about what was down there, and then we'll just focus on the outermost. So I'll drop the two S a bit down, so that we're able to see. Of course, take note that there is also one S down there, somewhere down, right? Very important. Okay. And of course, I've not written the excited state uh, configuration, electron configuration. So in the actual sense, what we started with is we add 1s2 as our ground state electron configuration of our carbon atom. And this was 2p to right. So what has happened is we've seen a shift of an electron to there. So in the excited state, we expect we are going to have 1s2, 2s1, 2p3. This is the excited state of a carbon atom. Okay, so every time it is reacting, it is in the excited state. Okay. So now, what basically happens? So I'll start with first of all the sp3 hybridization, where we have carbon forming up to three, four different bonds, right? In methane, for example. How does that happen? So basically, what happens is, since we are saying what is formed is an sp3 hybridized orbital. In the actual sense, if you look at the diagram, what we would expect is we need to have four different what? Four different orbitals because we have got four different atoms coming in. So what is going to happen? So what is going to happen is we're going to have, since it is saying sp3 hybridized, and of course I gave you a simpler way of you identifying the kind of hybridization by first of all counting the first connection as s and then counting the rest to be p's. So that is the shortest way of you identifying. So after you've identified you are now convinced to say there is a combination of a single s orbital and three different p orbitals. So therefore, since we have three p orbitals, it implies that all these three p orbitals are going to be involved in the in the bond formation, and then the s is also going to be involved. And of course, if we go back to our chemical bonding, what we know is hybridized orbitals have got the same energy, so we expect them to be closer to the p orbital because it is 75 percent what p okay and then there's just because if you look at the total number of orbitals we have four so it's 75 percent if you look at three out of four so therefore they are going to have the same energy but they're going to be closer to the p orbital so i can show them somewhere there and they're going to be four one two three and four so which are these four so this four is the combination of this s orbital and those three p orbitals there give, giving us now what we call sp3 hybridized orbitals right so we have four sp3 hybridized orbitals that are formed in such a case and of course we are going to have how many electrons single electron each 
so and then this one is also going to be there as well so what will basically happen is this is the kind of orbital that is these are the kind of orbitals that are going to basically take part in the bond formation with a single hydrogen atoms so the hydrogen atoms are going to come with the electrons there so in the actual sense what we, look, what we are looking at is an overlapping between the s orbit of each hydrogen atom overlapping with a single sp3 hybridized orbital of the carbon atom okay interesting let me try to illustrate the other kind of hybridization okay so if you wish to access the entire lesson you can basically register using the link in the description otherwise also learn how to go about this so we call this UPAC so UPAC nomenclature it those are the rules basically that this union came up with. of course UPAC stands for international union of pure and applied chemistry so it's a union that is in, in charge of on how to name the compound so we've got rules that we get to follow so I'll introduce you to the rules using these two examples here okay so each time you're trying to name a compound you need to identify the longest chain of carbon atoms okay so in this case it is very easy for you to tell because the horizontal one is obviously the longest one, right? So we have one, two, three, and four. So you need to ask yourself a question to say, what kind of an alkane has got four carbon atoms? So, of course, you need to know the order, of course. The first one is meth, and then we have eth, we have prop, and then we have bat, we have paint. So all the way up to ten, right? So in that video you have access to all that and of course number four we are able to see that it's bad so being an alkane is butane right okay so we also have what we call the substance so now substance basically are usually the other groups that are attached to the mention of the longest chain so in this case we can clearly identify ch3 to be what to be a substituent so what is a substituent so basically something attached to the parent of the longest chain of carbon atoms that's what we have now i also want you to know that we also have what we call alkyls so alkyls basically in a simple way is just basically an alkane that has lost a hydrogen atom so for example if you look at ethane which is ch4 if it loses an hydrogen atoms it becomes ch3 which is going to remain with what a bond there so ch3 is what we are seeing as a substance in our compound there so the name changes from methane, which was ending with A and E from an alkane, it will now become methyl, right? So we add we add YL to our prefixes that you are able to know from meth all the way up to decane, which is for number 10. And then we need to also give it a position on which carbon is it joined. So somebody else may decide to start counting from the right hand side where they'll say okay one two three four and then somebody says they are joined on carbon it is joined on carbon three so therefore i want you guys to understand that we need to go for the one that is giving it a lower positioning so in this case we can say that our methyl is joined on carbon number two okay so therefore our name becomes to methyl so the substance basically are considered to be the prefixes and then the parent structure or the parent name basically is the suffix which is at towards the end okay so what if i decided to add an extra methyl somewhere there and then you can remove a two there so that it becomes ch3 here so that now becomes we have now two methyl groups now on what position is the other one it is on position three so we can say since there are two we can just say die so die is the prefix that we're going to use for two so we have die tri tetra and so on and so forth so in this case it's dimethyl on what position are they so we'll say two comma three dash so that is how you name it in such a case so there are many many more things that we we get to name there are a lot of rules that are supposed to be introduced 
what if you have other substance like alcohols things like a fuels and many many more so all those things are going to be covered in our in our topic so just access the course register for the course you have access to all that and of course i would like to talk about the last one so this is an example of what you call an ether whenever you see an oxygen with two bonds so that is an ether right so if you look at this side how many bonds how many carbon atoms do we have one two three four so what kind of an alkane is that it's butane right so it's butane now in this case we can clearly see that this is a butane that has lost a hydrogen atom so we we'll consider it to be butyl so we have butyl and then the other side we have got two so that is ethyl and then this is an ether so basically how do we get to name it so from what we have come up with the name the common name can be based on the same we we'll alphabetize these two guys the suffix is going to be ether so we have butyl ethyl ether so that is a common name of name that's the common name of that ether now we also have the upac name so the upac name tells us to say that you go for the shortest one the shortest one is going to be the prefix and then you need to add o x y so the ethyl becomes ethox and then the longest one consider it to be an alkane so it will be ethoxy butane so what is the upac name of this kind of an ether so all those are going to be covered in our course i'm sure you don't want to miss it out and of course in our course many other more things that we're going to cover will include aromatic compounds like benzene okay and then we'll also cover things like cyclic compounds we'll talk about the reactions of alkanes alkenes alkynes and many other more compounds of course not forgetting substitution reactions free radical reactions the lewis structures or now we get to come up with the skeletal structures so the entire topic organic chemistry is going to be covered and of course we'll look at past paper questions together with the past tutorial sheet questions and the current ones that are yet to come out to make sure that your journey through organic chemistry is going to be very smooth so to access the entire topic it's just basically 50 kwacha or if you want to join the entire chemistry course and access all the other topics from psychometry is a hundred kwacha subscription per month so thank you very much for making it to the end of the video feel free to share the video with your friends who would want to learn organic chemistry the smart way of course we need to enjoy this not just mastering it's very simple and i'll challenge you guys with a lot of questions throughout the entire course